And I think we are almost live. We should be live in the group. It says we are. All right, cool, cool. We are live. Welcome back, Real Closers. Welcome back. Uh, we're here again, another live interview. Today we have Felix Hung. Uh, Felix, why don't you just introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what are we going to be doing today? Uh, Felix Hung, go by Felix a coach. Um, this is my 19th year in the real estate business. I have been an agent, top producer. I was uh, at one time top 50 agents in the DC metro area out of 15,000 agents. I moved here to California um, 13 years ago. Honestly, fell flat on my face. I just got hammered my first year license in 2010. I sold three houses and I was coming off of selling 58 houses, uh, 66 transactions with with the, the rentals that I did uh, and I just got demolished and I had to revisit everything I did I had to check myself and and I think that um, it really made me into the coach and trainer and person I am today to have to um, transform myself to a higher level to compete in the California market my second year I, I did about 20 transactions uh, bought a real estate franchise owned that for a couple of years hated it but we were doing 40 50 deals a year at that point. And then um, the last two years I've been at EXP previously. I also managed for First Team Real Estate and Realty One Group in Orange County, two very large independent brokerages there. Uh, but I just love coaching, training, mentoring people. And today, hopefully we're going to help you out with one of the two big problems in the marketplace today. So uh, number one being getting your offers accepted. Number two, getting more listings. There's a uh, number three creeping up right now, which is talking about the market and the market changes, but let's, we're going to stick to the first two and we'll, hopefully we'll give you some ideas on how you can pick up some more listings today. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you for being here today. You know, we actually met or almost met at a local event a few weeks ago. I just had, to, I, I stepped out, but you know, I decided to give you a call. I really liked what you talked about in that, you know, in that, in that event. And yeah, we're here today. Hopefully people in, you know, in the group, members in the group get value. Remember guys, if you have questions throughout the presentation, drop them in the comments. If you get value from, the, from this meeting today, drop a one. Let us know that you know, the content we're bringing to you is making a difference. Let us know uh, and we're here for you. All right, take it away, Felix. So Thanks, how sir. can we get more listings? <laughs> are, are you gonna be monitoring the, the questions in, on Facebook? Yeah, I'll, I'll check it, I'll check it. I'll keep you posted. All right. Very cool. Uh, I'm also a member in the group, so you can tag me in the group there and you guys can uh, follow me there. Um, and then on Instagram, my handle is at Felix, a coach. Uh, but let's go. Let's talk about how we get more listings. There's there's uh, my background again. I also spoke for California Association of Realtors twice, uh, one about recruiting management and then one about um, social media marketing. So I have generated over 70 million in um, sales volume in referral business, free, organically, organic social media um, from mainly Facebook. And I think Rogoda and I are talking about maybe doing a class like that in the future also. I'm also a moderator for uh, Lab Code Agents. Um, so here are the skills that you have to build if you really want to pick up more listings. Number one, I think that a lot of people don't have the right prospecting systems. They, they just do a lot of work and, and they throw it at the wall and see, see what sticks. That's not gonna cut it in 2022. The market is changing. And no longer are we getting 120% of value on everything that's on the market. You know, it's funny, we're, we're getting like 105, 100%. So people are still getting top dollar for their house. They're just not getting the same as a couple of months ago. And so there is a shift in marketing strategy. There is a shift in the marketplace. Um, and we have to understand how we have to have these high level conversations, not only with our, our sellers, but also our buyers. Um, you also have to master manually doing property valuations. I am very old school, my 19th year in this business. So I started at 22, I'm 41 this year. I cringe when people use automated valuations. Like they really truly don't understand how to value a property the right way. And that's really going to hurt them as the market shifts. No longer can you just throw a, a nominal number out there and, and just hope that you get 20, 30 offers to price it at the market. You can't do that anymore. You're going to really have to understand property valuations and how to place that property right in the marketplace with the competing other properties in the marketplace. Presentation skills are, are ultra important. Um, so no matter the organization, I think that this is something you all know, uh, whether you're being coached by somebody or, or whether you're part of a company that trains you on your listing presentation, 
presentation skills are going to be super important and handling objections are going to be super important. And then knowing your contracts. Uh, so I, I think a lot of brokerages will talk about some prospecting systems. A lot of brokerages will talk about presentation skills. I think where we really need to up level our, our skill set are the property valuations, having a systematic structure for, for getting listings, um, and then knowing your contracts. I, I don't think enough people actually understand the listing paperwork and also disclosures and also the, the, the buyer's contract, the, the purchase agreement in, in your relative states and, and regions there. So uh, look, this is what skill is. It's making a difficult uh, situation seem easy. That, that's it. So this is what I get a lot from my agents that I mentor or my clients. I, I still am some semi in the market counseling buyers and sellers. I break down something very, very difficult and I make it really easy for them to understand and I make it a really smooth process. That skill. So do you guys possess that skill to calm someone down that's freaking out about the market? Do you guys have skill where you can prevent, prevent most of the problems from happening before they happen? Can you see the problem a mile away? It's really funny when, when I'm talking to my, my agent partners and they ask me transactional questions, I will cut them off like 20, 30 seconds in the conversation. I'll, I'll give them the answer and they'll say, well, I didn't finish my question. And then I'll say, all right, humor me. Go ahead and finish your question. They'll talk for three, four, five more minutes. And I'll say, same answer. And they'll say, so how did you know the answer 20 or 30 seconds into the conversation? I've been doing this a long time. This, 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 uh, this moves in slow motion to me. So you, we need to possess skill and that only comes from experience. Okay, uh, by doing it guys. So you cannot develop skills by thinking about doing it. You actually have to do the activity over and over and over and over again. And you don't always have to have a victory here. You just have to have the volume of experience. And we have to talk about um, databases and we have to talk about how much each household is worth to you. So I saw this somewhere and I, I thought this was really interesting. Um, I think this is actually undervalued by the way, because I, I have a lot of coaching clients that, that make more than a thousand dollars per household in their database. But I think this is a good number if you're, if you're dealing with a lot of um, people that are not part of your sphere, they're just part of a database, this could be more accurate. How many people are in your database if you're keeping in touch with if everyone's worth $1,000 to you, you must grow this database on a weekly basis. If it's not growing, you're not working your business. No matter how you do it, I don't care how you do it, you just have to keep growing that database. Whether you're talking to people um, in line at Starbucks or in, at the mall or at Target or Walmart, or whether uh, you're cold calling or whether you're doing social media marketing, how are you growing that database? Are you asking for referrals from your friends and family? I don't care how you do it. That number needs to go up every single week. And, and here's something that's super easy that has gotten my team uh, listings. We just send out CMAs to everybody that owns a house and we tell them how much equity they have. It's that simple. But do we do it? We don't do it. Nobody, nobody does these simple, really simple, easy things. Um, what's better though, is we'll make a five minute video about how we feel about the market, the market forecast, how we envision the market really rolling out the next two, three months. Um, and then we also talk about their home valuation in connection with that. And, and that's worked out really, really well. And you don't have to use BombBomb. There's a lot of great services you can use. If you don't have that, all you have to do is do a Zoom like this, show your CMA on the screen, uh, download this file, upload it into YouTube as an unlisted link and send them the link. That, that's, it's that simple, okay? That's the best. If you're not comfortable flowing yet like this, maybe you want to use paper form and you want to scribble some notes on it and send a paper copy to them. What's worst is the email. Please stop emailing CMAs to people. No one cares. No one's going to open it up because you send an email and a link. Okay. It just doesn't happen. Like we, we get inundated with so many emails all the time that, that that's not going to get the, the attention that you want on it. The, the paper form that you give them by hand in a folder, or you, you drop off at their house, or the video is going to work a lot better. Um, you know, quick tips. Um, you can set it on their, their home anniversary, home anniversary, and you can tell them how much equity they made. And 
they probably love you for it, right? Uh, you know, you want to keep the, the, the videos fairly short because you want you want a, a lot of viewership on the videos. So condense it down to two or three minutes. This is what we find works really well. I already mentioned the bomb bomb and the unlisted YouTube. Um, and you're, you can also let them know you can provide a uh, more detailed uh, CMA because you haven't been in the property. You have to look at the property condition. You can also provide them net sheets, things like that. This is something, um, when I came up in the business, I, I of course was in the DC area. So the Washington Post used to have like a um, Q and A question and answer every single week. It was called the, the real estate mail, mail or mailbox or something like that. And every single Saturday, they would just answer random questions about real estate. And it was uh, it was a group of uh, attorneys and, and CPAs and, and real estate agents. And they together collectively would basically answer these, these questions. One question that came up a lot was about, um, about uh, capital gains and capital gains as it pertains to real estate. And, and somewhere along the path of going digital to social media, we lost this tax law. Like people really don't know that the, uh, the, the, the IRS section 121 exclusion law, which is basically if, if your clients own a home as their primary residence and they've lived there two out of the last five years, they can get up to 250,000 tax-free as a single person and, and up to 500,000 tax-free as a married couple. And I, when I'm talking to most agents today that have really had their license for less than six or seven years, I find most of the agents don't know this. I don't know because maybe it's not as prevalent on social media. Maybe it's not as prevalent in newspapers or on the news, um, but we grew up like alert. This was pounded into, into our heads like crazy. Um, so a couple of things about this. Um, you can read up on it. It's, it's RS section 121 exclusion. If you have a good friend that's a, a CPA or accountant, they, they can explain it to you. But the, here, here are the parameters. Number one, you must have lived there two out of the last five years. It doesn't have to be consecutive. So um, if you have someone in the military, they lived here one year, they moved away, they moved back their fifth year, it still counts. It still counts. Okay. So they're going to count from the closing date back five years and it's got to meet that parameter. Number two, um, house must be sold within that five-year window. That's what I talked about. From the closing date, it's got to it's got to be at least twenty-four months. Okay, um, must have not used this exclusion in the last two years. You get to use this every two years. So as long as you haven't claimed a primary residence and you haven't claimed this money in the last two years, you're good to use it again. And so if you want to read up more, the the actual publication is Irish Publication Five Twenty Three. But let's imagine this, right? So I even have this conversation with some of the agents on my team. Did you know you have over $500,000 in equity in your house? Maybe you and your husband need to talk about how you're going to spend that money or, or buy a bigger house or um, invest in it. So you can get the conversation going here because I, I think a lot of people don't know that, hey, above that price point, you're going to get taxed on a portion of that. And Anyone that knows me knows that I'm going to say work your sphere. That's it. So no matter who you interview, they're going to tell you as a top producer, most top producing real estate agents get most of their business from their sphere of influence. That's it. Their database. Done. There's no argument there. That is a fact. So that's low hanging fruit. Work your sphere. You can call them. You can text them. You can see them in person. You can ask them for referrals. You can send quarterly mailings out to them whether it's testimonials or just listed, just sold stuff. There's so many things that you guys can send out to them. Um, but when, when people want to do like an ad campaign, I find a lot of people want to spend money marketing to strangers, but I typically will teach market to your sphere first and then market to strangers. So what do you ask your SOI? Like, have you ever thought about, have you had any thoughts about selling this year? Do you know anyone that, that had, has, had talk, has had thoughts or, or has talked about wanting to sell this year? Or just quite simply, you know, would you like to know how much equity you have in your house or, or would you like to know your home value? Um, and, and something that we ask all buyers that we, that we come in contact with is, do you need to sell a home before you buy a new one? Because a lot of buyers have something to sell. And what we see it as a trending theme in, in our industry more and more today that didn't happen 10 years ago when I was in the business is that 
now agents will use a different agent to sell their house versus buying their new one. It's really weird because when I came up in the business and today, I help my clients out with both sides of the transaction always. Uh, but now fast forward now, um, there will be people that weren't happy on, on the listing experience side that will hire me as a buyer's agent on the other side now. So this trend is, is continuing. So to prevent them from using two different agents, you want to make sure that you ask them this question. Do you have something to sell before you buy your new one? So this is the first strategy sphere. Okay. So, um, what we also do is we go over reverse scenarios. So I think a lot of us know scenarios, right? And, and Roberto, uh, you're also a loan officer. You go through loan scenarios, right? Well, as a real estate agent, we go through you know, buying and selling scenarios. So a client will call us and say, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking to do. And then we offer them advice on how we can structure that. Just like you on the loan side. What, what people don't know is you can just do a reverse scenario, which is basically you, you pull up their information, like they, they have an FHA 4.55% interest rate. They, they're making this approximate payment. You can even look at it at, on the amortization schedule and know how much they, they have paid off. Um, and then you can offer them a solution based upon that. Hey, looks like you, you, you have this much equity in your house. Did you know you could do these things with that equity? So it's called reverse prospecting. Um, so you know they have the equity, you're just, you're just offering something of a solution to make them more money or, or build their wealth. So to do that, you need to make sure that you have the addresses for your sphere. So uh, you, can, you can typically get with your title reps and they will give you access to what's called Title Pro 247. And you can pull up uh, the tax records or preliminary uh, title information on all the properties. And you can just go down your sphere list and just look up five or 10 a day. And in a couple of months, you'll be done looking up all your friends and family on whether they own a house or not and what their address is. Then you start preparing some CMAs for it and you customize a solution to them. If you know that uh, they're about to be empty nesters, maybe you may offer a solution that is downsizing and you see if they're interested in going for it. Or if you know they're near retirement, you talk about that. Um, and posting stuff like this, uh, you know, have you ever thought about selling in 2022? Um, now we don't say yes and no, we say yes and maybe because we found that yes and maybe will give us actually a better reaction from the people. But can you guys find a nice picture that, that has no rights to it? These, these, are from, um, these are from the photographer I use for my, my photos. So there are no rights on these photos, right? Uh, so use that, make sure you're following all of those rules. But can't you do this? Like, could you not just do this uh, once a month? Like we literally have picked up listings from this, something super simple like this, put, putting this on a monthly basis on your Facebook and Instagram stories. Do you know that not the same exact people watch your stories every single day? I know that. Like, so it's, it's getting in front of people at the right time when we're think, they're thinking about doing something. So at least once a month, you can have the same one that you keep uploading over and over again once a month. That's it. Just make sure you put the poll on there because you want them to interact with it, right? Um, and then like live updates uh, about the market on Facebook. I think right now, this is probably really, really strong in getting some more listings and getting some more clients, period, buyers. Not a lot of people uh, are talking about uh, what's happening in the marketplace the right way. Uh, maybe we should have a panel about, uh, about where the market's headed because, uh, the, you know, really... Uh, markets starting to flatten out. We still don't see a crash coming. We see an adjustment. P things are still selling for 100% uh, or, or higher. It just seems like the market has shifted a lot because we used to get 107, 110, 115, 120% of value. So have we fallen from that point? Yes. Have we really started to see things go below market value? No. No. So Understand the market, understand your, your MLS stats, and, and let's not be emotional about the market here. We, we, do, we still do not see a crash or a bubble burst in here. But if you talk about that on Facebook Live, you'll get people to reach out to you. Um, expanding your SOI. So uh, also talk to your neighbors, and uh, they are always in the know on, on who's selling. I have a lot of agents that just keep in touch with their neighbors and keep a pulse on the neighborhood. I have one that, that just did this and picked up three listings the last three months just by talking to neighbors that are always out walking and they just, hey, so just shaking the tree. Have you heard about any of that that's looking to sell? Yeah, actually, I talked to someone the other day. I mentioned your name. Awesome. Can I get their number? What's their address? 
What about HOA and management companies? Do you know that sometimes they'll call and say, hey, um, I'm, I'm thinking about selling. Do you recommend anyone? That happens a lot. Or, or, hey, I heard that I have to have an HOA resale package. Like, what is that? What does that mean? I have to order some HOA docs or something. What is that? Um, and they'll walk them through the process. And so if you make friends with the people at the HOA, the HOA management company, um, they could refer you some people. So how do you do that? You could run for the board of directors for your homeowners association, um, or just call them a lot and, and be their friend. Volunteer. So uh, volunteering is a great way just to add people into your sphere and, and just be in touch with more people. That's more sphere stuff than, than really listing stuff. Join Facebook groups, uh, walk your dog in, in the dog park or walk your dog in your neighborhood. That's even better. And talk to people at the gym. But just expanding your sphere is a great way. This is one of our secrets. Like, like typically agents don't like talking to investors. They say, oh, wasted my time. They're going to lowball every single offer. I don't want to talk to them. I love talking to investors, especially the ones that spend money on marketing. So Roberto is an investor. Roberto cold calls me or, or messages me on Facebook or, or Instagram and says, do you have any properties I can buy? I'll say, hey, uh, Roberto, how are you sourcing these leads and, and what are you doing to, to find deals? And Roberto will say, oh, I'm sending out uh, postcards. I'll do bandit signs. I'll do all this stuff. I'll say, great. Hey, so what are you doing for, with your turndown leads? So let me describe what that is for those that don't know. So Roberto's an investor. He wants to wholesale flip houses or, or do assignment and, and land contracts. And, and Roberto's like, yeah, if the numbers don't work for me, I just go to the next person just like every typical investor. So what I'm going to offer Roberto is I'm going to say, hey, so um, if I gave you a great deal on, on relisting those properties, with like, would you be okay giving me all your turndown leads, all of the people that you get in contact with that want to sell their house but don't like your number? Can I get those people's information? What? You can do that? Yeah, wh why not? And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, like in the last two or three years, we've seen a rise in real estate investors. So if they're actually spending marketing dollars to get in front of homeowners, I'm working with them and I'm getting them into my Rolodex so that I can get their turndown leads. So all you do is you call them and you say, what do you do with the leads that, that don't work out? And how, what's your volume there? How many leads do you call every single month that don't work out? And, and here's another one. Um, I actually gave a class with uh, a good friend of mine last week about how to pick up builders and developers as clients. Do you know that uh, there's still a lot of building going on, new home construction? Yes. And uh, we're not just talking about like, like the, the big builders like, um, like Pulte and Toll Brothers and Lennar. Um, you know, there's builders and developers that only build one to three houses a year, sometimes five houses a year. Well, what if they built five houses a year at an average sales price of 800,000? Would that still be worth your time? I think so. That's five listings. But they speak a different language and you got you to be in their world and speak their language on how to pick up that listing. And you have to understand their perspective. If you go in there as a typical agent, you're going to bomb that presentation. But hey, um, how do you find these people? I'll give you one tip on how to find these people. Um, go to public hearings, uh, make friends with uh, the, the people in your city or county that uh, are fielding phone calls from builders, developers. So like engineer of the day, any staff, um, and you can ask them. So who, you know, have, have you, have you had anyone come up and, and um, you know, propose any, any new communities, any new developments? A lot of this is public record. You just have to go and do some of the research. Another way is um, some of the best architects. So network with the, the high the, the high value, high price architects in the area because uh, the builders are coming to them to get the design work done. And so they're going to know what the builders are doing. And um, it may be confidential, but they can at least refer you to their client. That's a builder developer. When I used to own my real estate franchise, we did a lot of attorney referrals. We were up to 40 or 50 closings a year, mostly not from Sphere, but mostly from attorney referrals. Um, so this is a great way to get business. Number one, um, let's talk about divorce and family law. So that could be a listing, plus it could be two buyer side deals. Probate. Um, if, if someone um, dies without uh, having their property in a trust, it has to go to probate, no matter the state that you're, they're in. 
So there's a lot of probate deals happening right now and you can network with probate attorneys. I have right now two probate attorneys um, in LA that send me business just from a relationship. Um, trust attorneys. So a trust is a lot more streamlined because it's, it, it's, 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 it's a property where someone probably passed uh, and um, it was already in a trust and, and you can just sell that just like a standard sale. The, the trustee will go ahead and, and put a price in and you put the paperwork in. It's, it's very much um, more like a traditional resale transaction with a couple of addendums attached. That's about it. Um, and bankruptcy attorneys. So the bulk of our business came from bankruptcy attorneys. And in most chapter seven bankruptcies, you have to liquidate the real estate. Are, there's some really quirky rules where sometimes you don't have to, but in like 98, 99% of the time, if you file a chapter seven bankruptcy, you have to liquidate the real estate. So if you know that, you can network with a bankruptcy attorney that does 100, 200 chapter sevens a year. And if they trust you, they may give you the business. That's, that's what we used to do. We used to uh, really network with bankruptcy attorneys specifically, but also we, we had some probate um, and we had some, some family law attorneys, but bankruptcy was our niche that we really, really, we farmed bankruptcy attorneys. We, we knew exactly what they liked. We knew exactly how to talk to them. And we knew exactly uh, what they were looking from, from an agent partner. Okay. And any attorneys um, can refer any of the above. So if they're an employment attorney, if they're a trademark attorney, um, they not necessarily will know divorce or probate or trust or bankruptcy attorneys as friends, but attorneys can go to whatever continuing edu education they want. And they go to a lot of continuing education to, to keep their, their uh, license. And so um, when they go to continue ed, they meet a lot of attorneys from different backgrounds, entertainment attorneys, and they'll meet attorneys that fall under these categories. And so that's why, even though you may have friends that are attorneys, when they go to their, do their continuing education, typically they're exposed to other attorneys in other sectors. They typically can do anything they want. It's not like real estate where you have to have a certain number of fair housing, a certain number of this. They can do whatever they want when it comes to uh, their education, from my understanding. Agent referrals. So um, this is something that, that I teach a lot also, which is um, getting referrals from other agents. So I get a lot of uh, my team's uh, listings and buyer side deals as referrals from other agents. How do I do it? I just train, I give value like this, and then they recognize me in Southern California and they'll, they'll call my, my team and I to help with real, the real estate. But let's say that you guys are in... Um, large coaching, coaching companies like uh, Craig Proctor or, uh, or Tom Ferry or Mike Ferry, and you guys are going to a lot of the in-person events. Well, network with the agents, but do you know, like there are agents that actually would probably benefit you more than other agents? Yeah, let's use the Redfin migration tool uh, because it'll actually tell you based upon statistics, the top 10 markets that are moving into your area for example, right, or or where they're moving to. So if you're if you're looking for listings, you can say, hey, these are the market areas that are, are moving out of LA, or these are the market areas that are moving into LA. Um, so if we have some time, I can I can definitely show you that tool on the screen, and you guys can you guys can see it's really fun to play with. But if you want to Google that Redfin migration tool, I, I typically just give a class just on that, and and you can also network virtually. You don't have to wait for for your the next Tom Fury event. You can just go on Facebook. You can just go on LinkedIn and Instagram and find the agents that are in that area or Google search and just old fashioned call them. Do you have a referral partner in Orange County, California? I would like to be that person. Do you have a, a referral partner, uh, referral agent in Los Angeles? I would like to be that person. Relocation companies also. So you can also look on Twitter and LinkedIn and um, specifically, but you can search like relocating uh, relocation, moving to, moving to LA, moving to Orange County, moving to California. And you can see that people actually hashtag these things and you can, you can message them and, and ask them if, if they need some help with real estate. But you can also look at companies. So pull up all the major companies in your area um, and, and see if they have in-house relocation. Most of them do. Um, but did you know a lot of medium-sized companies don't have any uh, internal relocation program and you guys could just come up with a relocation program and pitch it to medium-sized companies? Medium-sized meaning like 50 to 100 people per location, but they still have multiple locations in multiple states. 
vacant homes. So uh, I have a lot of my agent partners that uh, will pay their family, their friends to uh, take pictures of vacant homes, the dilapidated homes and send them um, the addresses. Five bucks or, or $5 Starbucks gift card for every vacant home that you send me. And so they'll just send them vacant homes and then we, we pull the tax records and, and then we'll try to uh, pin down the owner's phone number and the owner's uh, mailing address and, and we'll try to ask to see if they're interested in selling. We can also look up a uh, delinquent property tax owner. So you can call your city, county, uh, municipality and say, you know, so when do you have tax sales and, and what's the process and procedure when you have people delinquent on their taxes? And then when do you actually do a tax foreclosure and what is that procedure? And ask them questions about this. And um, then you contact the homeowners to prevent that from happening. Is, is, and you can say, is there a public list of these people that are late and how, how would I find that list? Here's another secret that we have. Uh, we, we go to, to the large banks and credit unions and we partner with them. So Wells Fargo, Bank of America, uh, Chase, US Bank, here in California, Union Bank and so forth. You know, a lot of them have um, uh, programs where they'll allow the realtor to sit in the branch and, and take leads for the day. And depending on the city and depending on location, if, if the, uh, the area that you're in is more affluent, do you know that there's, a high probability they also have something to sell before they rebuy. So there's a way you can just call uh, the, the local, you can just walk into your, your Wells Fargo Bank of America branch and say, um, who's the mortgage manager or who can I talk to about, uh, you know, being a realtor partner for, for your bank and they'll, they'll direct you in the right direction. Um, networking. Um, and so what you want to think is whose database can you piggyback off of? Or who works with sellers right before they sell? Or, uh, I already answered that in the bottom there. So like Home Depot or Lowe's employees, do you know, like people talk to them about selling all the time. I'm, I'm doing a DIY. I'm doing this. I'm doing this with my house. I'm buying paint to do this and this and this. I'm thinking about selling in the next year or so. Uh, contractors, handyman, landscapers, painters, all of these people um, are talking to sellers right before they sell. What if you made friends with contractors and handyman and, and in the, your area, they're getting phone calls from sellers saying, hey, I'm, I'm trying to fix my house up to sell. Can you help me? Do you have a realtor partner that you refer? Can I be that partner? Search MLS. So uh, do you know that you can search new and old rental listings? Um, and um, guys, here, here's what you guys need to know, right? Um, this is not a strategy that uh, I, I can, I teach this, but we don't do this because <laughs> it, it makes other agents angry. Um, this is all uh, compliant to Realtor Code of Ethics, but you guys know that you guys can um, prospect like a rental listing for future business. Like I can ask that, I can contact that landlord um, that has their rental listing up on the MLS and I can say, hey, um, if you ever want to sell in the future, please call me. I cannot can, cannot touch the rental contract. I cannot mess with the rental, but I can say, hey, when, when you want to sell in the future, like a year or two down the road, you know, call me about selling. I, I can't interfere with your contract about renting, right? But if they want to sell today, what are they going to do? They're going to call me back today though. Hey, actually, I'm thinking about just selling this place. You may search a withdrawn, uh, canceled, expired. Um, and and do, do a reverse search. So, so sort of know which listings are probably going to go expired in the near future, in the near future, right? If there are 100, 150 days on the market, I bet that no one's shown that house for a while. And I bet that if you show that house and then it goes expired the next month or so, you're probably going to be one of the agents that the seller just calls back for maybe some feedback after their agreement expires. Maybe. This is really easy. Just go on Craigslist in your local area and go for, for rent by owner or for sale by owner and message all those people right on Craigslist. Um, here's another thing. Um, this is from Tom Ferry. I'm going to give Tom Ferry credit for this. I, 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 do re, I do my own research on a lot of stuff. This was really slick. So uh, in one, Tom, one of Tom Ferry's videos, he said, hey, write, write uh, on a post-it note, call me about your house and stick it to a business card and stick it on the door. And they'll call you about it. And then you're literally just reverse prospecting. You're getting them to call you and you're just saying, well, yeah, hey, I, I was leaving you that note because, you know, I have a lot of clients that are looking in this area. 
would you ever consider selling this year? And see what they say. And again, this is also from Tom Ferry. This was, I think, genius. So using slide broadcast or any uh, ringless voicemail drop system to drop a message. So what um, I'm, I'm not going to steal Tom's thunder. I would say research, uh, Google this and, and look at the video. But basically, Tom said, make sure you have real buyers. Don't, don't just do this for marketing purposes. Don't have a straw buyer. Don't have a fake buyer. Have real buyers looking in that neighborhood. And so if this is true and, and you say this and you do it into slide broadcast and you broadcast it out to uh, a couple thousand homeowners in the area, I think that you're going to get a good result. Um, so my team does do this. We do use this technique. Uh, we buy the homeowner's phone number data wherever we can get it. Um, it's not all accurate, but we'll, we'll buy it wherever we can get it. And, and we do shoot out these messages. And it, it's, it's quite simply, hey, it's, it's Felix at EXP. I, I was representing a buyer that was trying to buy your neighborhood. We typically, we, um, we just lost out on the house and I'm messaging you because you have a house in the neighborhood and just seeing if you are considering selling in 2022. Can you call me if you are? That's it. Uh, assisted living facilities, do you guys know that's really expensive to put a loved one in a living facility, assisted living facility. So do you also know that uh, the sales managers make a commission for every person that uh, moves in? Yeah, so um, they're probably dealing with hundreds and hundreds of people transitioning out of their homes into facilities, especially when they don't have kids. Um, and a lot of them are selling their homes to pay for their long-term care. So make friends with managers. Um, people more likely to sell. So we, we are, are, we do focus on people more likely to sell because they're near retirement or they've owned their house for a long time, or, uh, it's got multiple levels and mailers, uh, mailers are hot right now. We are still doing mailers. I've got a, I've got a accountability group that is uh, dedicated to sending out at least a thousand mailers per month. And, uh, it's, it's working. Uh, we, we average five calls per thousand letters and, and typically uh, for every 2000, we're at least picking up at least one listing for every 2000 mailer. So we've got it systematized and, and we are looking for, of course, people that are likely to sell in the next 12 months. We're looking for expired for sale by owner, absentee landlords hot, um, distressed properties are hot and there's a system. And typically I'll just summarize this by saying um, your first goal is to get them to open up the letter. And so we use curiosity to get them to open up the letter. And um, I also teach something called digital farming. So digital farming is where um, I ask my title rep uh, for data. Let's say I, I, I live near Irvine, California. So Irvine, California. Um, and then from there, um, I will literally Google them. I'll, I'll Facebook stock them. I'll LinkedIn search them. And let's say it's uh, it's Roberto Salas. And so I'll say, okay, hey, so I don't know where Roberto lives. Let's say Roberto lives in Northridge, California. I'll, I'll literally just look up Roberto Salas, Northridge, California, and I'll add all the Roberto Salases that live in, in Northridge. Hey, one of them is that probably that, that person that owns that house in Northridge. Okay. And then um, here's what we see. We see that um, men get about 15 to 25% of their friend request out to that population get accepted. We see women getting 40 to 50% of the friend request being accepted. But let's just say it's, it, it's, it's 20%. If one out of five of, of my digital farm add me back as friends on Facebook, that's 200 homeowners now that's friends of mine on Facebook or LinkedIn following my content they're more likely when I send EDDM or I, I'm actually farming to them that they know me, they know my face, they know my family. Um, I'm more likely to get that listing. No one teaches this, by the way. I, I have yet, I've been teaching this for two years. I've yet to have anyone teach this. I don't know why. Um, that's mailers. We'll skip that. We'll skip making it up. Oh, so another thing we teach is uh, LinkedIn uh, organically. So um, if you want to do LinkedIn as a strategy, make sure you have a nice headshot. Uh, make sure you have a business specific background that, that screams I'm in real estate or I'm in mortgage. Yes, it has to scream it. Don't, don't be ambiguous here. Um, we want to write a great headline that says you're in that specific industry. Make sure you fill it out completely. And then also under each uh, position that you've held, 
Did you know that you can actually go and add media like a PDF, Word documents, uh, links to YouTube videos, link like I, I got featured on some podcasts and I have that up there. So yeah, put your listing flyers on there, put, put everything that you had at your prior brokerages and your current brokerage. Um, so you, these are some examples of like backgrounds and headshots and things like that. And you can sort of see licensed real estate professional, EXP Realty, luxury property, investors and buyers agent, uh, specializing in buying, selling in Southern California, um, specializing uh, in selling in Fresno, uh, realtor, realtor, realtor. So you want to make it really, really specific. And, and I, I prefer, I like, and I train on people putting their, their primary marketing area. So here's some more examples. Real estate industry veterans specializing in first time home buyers, military relocation, whatever you want to put. But we like to put the city or region right on there. Um, and so uh, add your geographical farm, add uh, your cold market that, that makes a lot of money. Um, and, and so the cold market that, that makes a lot of money, we search by either company or profession or title. And this is not taught uh, out there. There are companies that actually do this for you, but uh, I pay those companies and they really didn't go in depth. Like I'm going in depth here in adding the right people here. So uh, you can ask CEOs and CFOs of companies. You can add senior vice presidents and presidents of companies. Um, and you can search that right on LinkedIn. You can also add people by profession, like you can add doctors and you can add lawyers and you can add engineers that make a lot of money. And you can search them by company like Kaiser Permanente or, or uh, the LAPD or, or whatever other organization that they're a part of. Um, and then you just, you send them a, a, an offer message. So step one, you, you, you send a lot of requests out. Step two, um, after they accept your request, uh, you are sending them a message like this. It's, we don't do the automated thing. Uh, we actually will manually send these once a month. And typically what we find is for every 150 messages that we send out, we pick up a client. Then you, you, you're active on LinkedIn. So you're posting twice a week. You're, you're doing some like and comment activity on posts. You're engaging. And I know it's sped through that. And, and I know we got another 18 minutes, but that's what I got for you. If you guys want to connect with me um, on, on Instagram, it's at Felix, a coach. And um, I'm also a member of this, this group, real closer. So you can, you can also find my, my Facebook profile in the group here. Uh, Roberta brother, any questions about anything we went over? Let me, let me look up the group. Let me see if we have some questions, man. That was a lot of content, a lot of value. I mean, what, we don't have any questions right now, but let me, let me ask you this. Um, so we have a lot of members in the group and, you know, we're going to have some new ones, some new members, some new agents. If they had to pick, you know, a, a couple of the things that you went over today, which one do you think would be best to start with? You know, I always tell people to start with your sphere, but beyond sphere, um, I think it also relates to, you know, um, their influence. And when, when I'm, coaching uh, one of my agents or when I'm coaching one of my coaching clients, I look at what their influence is. So what do I mean by that? Um, who they have, who do they have influence over? So I'm not going to coach someone that's 22 years old, the same as I'm going to coach someone at 40 or 50 years old. They have different influence and they have influence over different types of people. So at 22 years old, I'm going to say, Ooh, your influence is over people 16 to 25. Not a lot of those people are homeowners. So because you don't have a lot of influence over that, the sphere is probably not going to be a system that's really going to make you a lot of money. And it's not going to be the best return on your time and return on your investment. You probably want to do cold calling. You probably want to do door knocking um, for, for something like that. Uh, you probably want to uh, leverage yourself where you can position yourself maybe um, in front of an attorney or in front of uh, a relationship investor, right? So um I love the investor thing. I love working with investors. I love farming attorneys. Um, those are those are two I really, really am passionate about. Um, but it, it depends is the answer and depends on who you have influence over. So if you're asking uh, that question to yourself on where, where should I start with these strategies, uh, think about who you have influence over. If you have a lot of friends that are already homeowners, start with Sphere. 
And if you say, I'm working that and I'm getting five or 10 listings a year from that, how do I expand past that? Then we can look at a lot of these different strategies. I really like farming attorneys and I really like working with investors for their turn down leads. I really like those two. Um, who doesn't like, like selling a nice flip, right? So um, those are two I, I like to really work. Yeah, you know, an investor that turned down leads, it, it's actually one thing that caught my attention the first time I heard you talk about that because it, it's true. Investors want deals right away. They don't care about listings, right? They, even if they work with some, some realtors, they don't, they don't care about them. But like you said, you know, have that intent to ask for those leads, right? And then work with them. And we actually talked about that last week with, you know, Anthony which is how do you get listings from working with investors? And this is, this is really a great way. And you're basically supporting each other and getting more business that way. Yeah, shout out to Anthony. Anthony's a friend of mine also. And you know, um, I have investors in, in, as business partners also, and they pick up deals from other investors. They pick up deals from wholesaling investors. So yes, it's, like, it's, it's about networking. It's about getting to know people. Um, and, and my investors also build a lot of friendship with agents so that they want to be first in line when you guys have a property, not in best shape, um, maybe doesn't qualify for most financing and you want to get rid of it quickly. So, um, networking is, is a big one. Networking is key, but you want to focus on the right networking, right? So, uh, we taught a class last week on how to pick up builders and developers as clients. You want to network in the right circles to make that happen. Another question that gets asked a lot is how do I break into a higher price point? And so you can preview a lot of houses and, and put those on your social media uh, and people will, will think, huh, they sell in that price point. You can uh, network within your company uh, to get open houses at a higher price point. That also helps. Um, you, you can um, also um, be around people that have higher net worth and who would buy in that price point. So uh, I used to be part of a social club in, in LA and Southern California. Um, and I was surprised. I, I thought it was thousands of dollars a month to join that social club. It cost me about $300 a month. And I was able to network with high caliber individuals that, that made a lot of money for $300 a month. And I enjoyed it myself. Uh, so that's, um, if you live in a city, there's, it's not a country club, it's a social club. So there's a lot of social clubs in the area. There are also social clubs like in LA that cost like two or $3,000 a month, but not all of them cost that much money. It's, it's the present day uh, country club. Right, right. And I've seen that lately. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, newer agents going into like TikTok, you know, touring uh, houses, right? And showing you, hey, this is how much, you know, this is what you can get with, you know, a million dollars here in Los Angeles, or this is what you can get here in this area and this area and this area. And, and one of the things that you talked about was how to get business organically, right? And, and we talked about this, and this is something definitely that uh, we can cover in another, in another live, but basically you can still, you are able to build a business without spending money on advertising. You do have to trade time, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's time consuming, but it Sweat works. Equity. Yeah, sweat equity versus check equity. So either you're going to pay for systems and pay for speed of implementation, or you're going to pay by, by sweat equity and your hard work. You decide, right? So typically when, when I'm, I'm meeting brand new agents, they, they really would prefer not to invest a lot of money, uh, but they, they are willing to invest a lot of sweat equity. Yeah, and those who put in the work will eventually get the results, right? It's not something that's going to be, uh, like, I've tried this and it doesn't work. And most of the time they, they've tried it, but they've tried it for what? You know, a few weeks and they're not really looking at the long-term effects of whatever they're working on today, right? Three months, you got to give it, what, at least three months, six months, nine months and keep at it, right? Otherwise, you're not going to get the results. Very true. So let me expand on what you just said, Roberto. Um, I think a lot of people give up before they see the fortune and, and it, it, sometimes you have to, you have to pay the price and they don't pay enough of the price to see the result. What if I told you that mm. the average number of, well, I, I did tell you average number of LinkedIn messages is, is 150 to get a client. What if you sent out 50 and you said, this doesn't work and you quit, 
What if you send out 100 and, and you said it doesn't work and you quit? What if you send out 149 and 151 was a client and you, you quit? So a lot of you guys are, are, are quitting before you see the gold. And, and it's not that the technique doesn't work. It's that you may not be working the numbers. You may not understand the technique. Uh, and you may not be doing it the way that your coach or trainer, your manager is teaching you how to do it. So that's important to understand. And, and check your ego and say, what am I doing that's not right? When I'm boxing, I, I'm a avid, I love boxing. Um, when I first started boxing, I had an ego. I thought I, I was a, I thought I was a natural born athlete. I was a wrestler. So I, I'm punching, punching stupid easy. I've been fights. I've been in fights. It's just punching. So uh, I went to boxing for the first time with my friend who is an amateur boxer and um, MM, professional MMA fighter. And I sucked for the first two or three weeks because I was trying to punch Felix's way. So this is what I'm going to leave you guys with. When you guys are, are sitting through a class, stop thinking about how you're thinking about you should implement the process. You need to think about what the instructor is trying to get through to you. So when I said, huh, what does Craig want me to do? How does Craig want me to punch? How does Craig want me to do this technique? That's when my boxing excelled. That's when I did a lot better in boxing. It wasn't, what, what does Felix think? No, I'm what I think is probably messing up the formula. What I think is probably messing up my success. What I think is affecting my results. When I put myself out of the equation, I said, well, how does Craig want me to punch? That's when it got better. That's when my, my results sped up super quick. It wasn't what does Felix think. So when I see people attend my classes, I see people attend other classes. That's where they fall short, I think. They, they put too, too much of their opinion and their thought into it when there's no place for it. There's already a system and structure that's proven it's successful. Just follow that proven framework uh, of success. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Felix. Uh, I know we talked about, you know, doing more of these over the next few weeks. Let's, let's talk about that. I know you brought a ton, a ton of value today. If you guys found value in today's interview, drop a one, let us know, pick and choose out of those, you know, 21 plus ways of getting listings today. Let us know which ones you we want you want us to dive deeper into, and we'll come back. You know, uh, you can find Felix on Instagram. You can find Felix in the group. You can find him on Facebook. He's almost everywhere now. <laughs> That's how I found him. So, Felix, thanks a lot again. Uh, have a great day, and and we'll we'll see you in the next interview. Thanks for having me.